All right, hit the button. Yeah, economics video. Um, I really wanted to wait till I really had this, you know, just really in my head, just easy to spit out and make sense of it. Um, so anyway, uh, Modern Mystics made a video, and I don't remember any direct quotes out of it, but it's just this, the same old kind of argument that, yeah, there's going to be this crash, and there's nothing to be done about it, and it's just all too complex, and the system, blah, blah, blah. And it really isn't that complex. Um, and it really doesn't have to crash. And none of this, it's, it's, everything about the system, everything that's happening right now could just continue to keep happening. It's that certain people are going to do certain things that are going to make the thing fall apart. Um, and like the government printing money. Um, you know, because this is somehow a solution to the problem. So we won't raise taxes, we won't gain more revenue, instead we'll print cash and uh, devalue with the cash and create inflation in the future. And it could be a very soon future. Uh, so I guess I'll get to that first, the inflation thing and deflation thing, and they're both here. All right, we can see them both here. And there's going to be inflation in commodities, anything that has, anything solid, anything that's real, is going to inflate in value. Anything, anything's made out of the raw resources, the hardcore stuff. So your the the food and fuel is going to inflate, and uh, you see deflation in consumer goods. You know stuff that have has work in it. Anything that has work built into it, because work has been devalued, um, and there's a surplus of of stuff out there and production capacity. And so it's a buyer's market in that sense. But eventually they're going to run out of that. And people start getting unemployed and be even, the whole thing will just feed on itself. They'll be less consuming, less producing, less consuming, less producing. The two will feed each other into a, an inflation and spiral there. Um, you know, and the idea that, like I said, basically the inflation is going to be created by the fact that the government's now printing cash. It's not even selling debt. It's just going to print cash. Uh, for this foreseeable future, and uh, that just isn't going to work. <laughs> That's just guaranteed. It, it just—it's like a flat tax. It just takes the money out of everybody's pocket, um, and you know to pay it to um, the owners. And that's the part I want to get to: is the surplus argument again, and the work argument again. All value in the economy is created by work, and there's work that's productive socially, and work that's not productive socially. Now, there's lots of obviously unproductive work, um, like just people who spam the internet and try to make money. Um, uh, you know, there's unproductive work in the financial system where people just create instruments that they can trade and make some money off of it, but it doesn't create anything of real value. Um, it's just a gimmick. The Enron kind of examples of ways that a whole bunch of people did a lot of work and it was absolutely useless um, because none of it was real. There was any real value produced. It was all fake. Um, and then you can go into the more complex examples, all the people who are working in marketing. We get no, nothing of value for that. Um, you know, TV commercials that are playing with our psychology, big waste of money. Uh, paying celebrities, big waste of money. Um, you know, there's a ton of waste in the system in terms of people are spending their time as I stated, engineering a way to get money out of people's pocket instead of actually put value in their hand <laughs> for the money they take from their pocket. Um, and so theoretically, you know, as much as what, 70% of the economy is bullshit, is scheming and wheeling and dealing, are um, services to the wealthy. It's basically the game is being played where uh, the wealthy own the assets, and they, they collect an income um, off that ownership in the form of interest. And that basically guarantees future inflation because that's the only way this interest can be paid. Um, or else you have to decrease somebody's wages. You have to take it out of a worker's pocket. And we've basically decreased wages now as low as they can go. And people you know, in China can barely survive on the wages they're making. And uh, so you can't go any lower. And so, um, you know, now it's that 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 half of the the, the 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 pay the interest back game is over. And so the only other way to pay it back is to devalue the money. Um, but anyway, it's this whole surplus thing, and that's what um, permits the investment thing. 
and rich people just aren't very good investors. They invest in their gluttony. Um, so a big, huge part of the economy is built around just servicing them, trimming their, their lawns and, you know, marbling their kitchens and doing all of that kind of crap um, that produces no real social value. It's just completely socially unproductive work. It doesn't put roofs over people's heads. Um, it just wastes labor. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, that doesn't do us any good. The, the idea is to 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 maximize um, labor to maxim and so we all have to do less of it and enjoy the fruits of of its benefits but we can't do that if we keep having systems that are just so inefficient and sloppy like the internet for example just so much there's so much losses built into all the spam and and hacking um, and viruses and all the other crap that's involved it's like a huge tax on the internet Google's an example. Google's basically just taxing, clicking on the internet. They charge a, a, over a dollar per click on the internet. That's what it costs the business to do business on the internet. Um, and that cost is being paid by the consumers. It's not being paid by Google. It's not being paid by the advertisers. It's being paid by the consumers. All of this waste is the consumer's problem. They pay for the Lear jets. They pay for the mansions. They, we pay for all of this shit. There's no free millionaires. Millionaires come at a price. Billionaires come at a price. Uh, so, yeah, so the game has basically been is that we've um, imported our, our doing work thing to other countries and take it to exploit labor in other countries. And the owners of that are our rich people here who have invested their money over there um, to build factories and create product that they can make a profit on. And so for the last few decades, we've been basically picking up what money we can make off of the rich, you know, because the rich have money coming in from overseas. They spend the money on their manicured lawns. We manicure their lawn and everybody seems like they're happy. But again, it's not productive work. We're not doing anything for each other. We're servicing the king and um, that's not productive. That doesn't build bridges. It doesn't build Hoover dams. It doesn't get the job done of creating solid infrastructure and all that kind of crud. Um, so where do I want to go with this? But it's this idea of ownership. Again, it, we're not working for each other anymore. And that's the real downside here. We've totally lost the idea that, um, you know, in the economy is, is basically, I help you build your house, you help me build my house. You've got a, your, your wife is sick, you got a problem, I help you out, if something happens to me, you help me out. That kind of exchange We've lost it and we've created a bunch of dishonest, crooked lines in between all of that stuff where everything goes into some exchange where, you know, somebody's going to make another cut. It's going to take a profit out of each exchange. Each transaction we do, somebody's going to be taxing it with their um, claim of ownership and I, I'm entitled to an interest for not doing any work, not contributing anything but money. And I guess that's uh, the argument here is this idea of holding surplus or claims of ownership. Um, you know, basically, um, you know, all future investment is ba is all just future contracts. And the idea, of, again, I, I sort of made this point before, but in any transaction where there isn't trust, there has to be somebody who initiates the transaction. You can't just say, I'll build your house, I'll help you build your house, you help me build mine, and then I help you build your house, you drop dead of a heart attack, and I'm totally, I, I'm out of luck, I lose. So that's why we have transaction cash to make these deals possible. And we use this, you know, this, this idea of beyond just the cash, the cash implicates a whole bunch of other stuff. It allows us to value everything else in the world, all the other stuff, with a cash value. It's not the same as cash, but it's, it effectively expands the pool of cash to all of that stuff because now the stuff can be labeled. You know, it can be, we can say, this pen is worth 22 cents and we can say okay it's a 20 it's this is 22 cents worth of this is you know a quarter right here i got a quarter it doesn't look like a quarter it's not really a quarter but it's a quarter um and so what's happened in our economy is we've been taxing people who own um, less on the income they make off of interest for owning and lending and uh, we're taxing work at a higher rate. So there's certain people acquiring lots and lots of stuff, lots of claims of ownership, and they have lots and lots and lots of this stuff. And they want to c 
they want to keep it in a form that 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 makes them money. So a certificate or something, a piece of paper that says they own something, some of that isn't worth anything, like the stock market. I mean, it's not very reliable. And um, so then they try to own something that's more solid, um, especially in, when things go bad. And that's what's starting to happen, is things are going to start going bad, and they're going to realize they have to somehow convert their stuff that's in one form of paper or one form of something into something more real. And they're probably not going to even want cash because cash is going to be vulnerable to how much the government prints. And so that can be a real problem. You don't want to own something that the government's printing a whole bunch of um, because it's obviously going to lose its value. Uh, where do I want to go with this? Um, but it's this whole ownership problem. So there's a bunch of rich people who have basically acquired more and more claims of ownership. And so now they own a higher percentage of everything. They own a higher percentage of all the cars on the road. Um, they own a higher percentage of the absolute value of all the houses in America. So where 50 years ago the, 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 the interest tours might have owned 10% of real value, now they own 70% of real value. Um, and every year those house prices were going up because they were taking bits of their surplus and saying, go ahead and use my surplus. I get interest. I'm going to get two times the value of it back, or at least one and a half in the end just for your ability to use what I have. Um, and it's that tax on use that's just been hugely inefficient and gotten everybody in debt. And now they don't own their assets anymore. They don't own their life anymore. And there's no way they can invest in their own self because they can't even, no one's investing in work for them to do. No one's investing in a job they can do here except for serving some rich man. They're not investing in in manufacturing or building or constructing or any of that stuff uh, because it's not in their financial interest to do that. They can make more money on their money someplace else and that's all they care about is how much interest they make. They don't care about how well they served human beings, uh, their fellow man. They don't give a fuck about that. And uh, that's the real problem. So until we gain, regain ownership of our lives, um, there won't be any fair exchanges. Everything's going to be taxed by all these middlemen and all this waste. Uh, yeah, so I really didn't get to why this crashes the economy, but I think you can get the idea. If a tiny percentage of people are controlling more and more assets, and the money they're making on interest is being taxed at a lower rate than real work, that can't do anything else but fail. I mean, it just can't go anywhere but failure. The rich, the tinier, smaller and smaller percentage get richer and richer and richer. They make more and more money because their income is taxed less and less. Um, yeah, then all of a sudden, all everybody else just becomes renters to this tiny 5%, 3% um, of the human race that we're all renting our life from. And you are renting the national debt. If you're an American, you owe hundreds of thousands of dollars per worker. Um, in debt to them okay so don't think even if you don't have any personal debt you have debt okay and it's been it's 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 been created uh, whether you like it or not whether you voted for it or not you're stuck with it and uh, if those rich owners those people who claim ownership the IOUs to that debt um, want to cash it out um, we don't have the money there's no way to cash it out uh, so you, uh, you have to print the cash to cash them out. And uh, that's where the problem lies. And that's why this just can't work, because it's too big a liability. So the whole point is, is that the whole problem isn't something in the structure. It's only in the greedy, maniacal, um, interest tour mentality. And if you just break that, if you just do a, a, a debt jubilee or whatever, and just erase that problem, um, or a substantial part of it, um, yeah, everything's fine. It's no, we don't have a problem, <laughs> you know. Um, we just have to invest more wisely and quit wasting money on fraud and bullshit and, uh, you know, nonsense. Uh, yeah, that's probably enough. Yeah, so, yeah, I just, I, I knew it wasn't going to be as coherent as I wanted it to be. Um, but the, this whole, the whole financial crisis we're going to march into has all been created by a tiny percent of these rich motherfuckers 
who have just taken advantage um, of the system and um, just the whole idea of creating a, a system that uh, taxed work at a higher rate than interest income, uh, ownership income, a tax to the king, that's all it is. I mean, some owner of surplus just sits on his ass and says, I'm entitled. Uh, the minute we said okay to that, um, we shot ourselves, um, you know, somewhere important. <laughs> and we were going to die eventually of that wound. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. All right, enough of a video. So until next time and such. Let me teleport.